50% of all stars have planets going around them, and perhaps one, maybe 5% of all stars have Earth-like planets going around them. One thousand and thirty are confirmed planets. Hundreds of individuals, many serving in our government, serving in our military, including with top security clearances, prepared to go before Congress and testify to the kinds of evidence you'll hear this week, which confirms what Edgar Mitchell said. We are not alone in the universe. We are being engaged now. The government, for national security reasons, withheld that from us during the Cold War. But the Cold War is over, and now it's time to move forward. NASA just announced the discovery of 500 new planets. They're all orbiting other stars, not our sun, but one of them shares some similarities with Earth. With the numerous discoveries made in the last couple of months, the possibility of life elsewhere in the cosmos is something being considered not only by space agencies around the world, but by numerous governments as well. Not long ago, astronomers gathered in front of Congress, U.S., and discussed extraterrestrial life, citing the sheer size of the universe. Astronomers emphasized that there are trillions of stars out there in the cosmos, and it is very likely that one out of five stars harbors an Earth-like planet for life to exist as we know it. But that doesn't mean that life elsewhere needs the same conditions as life on Earth needs in order to survive. Maybe somewhere out there life needs magma and nitrogen to survive. Well, the holy grail of planetary science is to find an Earth-like tween in outer space. So when you look at the night sky, you will wonder, is anyone looking back at us? And this new planet, Kepler-438b, is a... It's a game changer. The number of habitable worlds in our galaxy is certainly in the tens of billions, minimum, and we haven't even talked about the moons, and the number of galaxies we can see, other than our own, is about 100 billion. Seth Shostak, senior astronomer at California's SETI Institute, our galaxy that you see every night has over a hundred billion stars and we think that about a billion of them have Earth-like planets going around them. So how did we find this? How in this plethora of stars in the solar system did we find that one that could be like Earth? Well, stars are very easy to see, but they get eclipsed by the planet which moves in front of the mother star. And so our telescopes are so sensitive, we can see the dimming, the slight dimming of starlight as the planet goes across the face of the sun, and that's how we do it. Is NASA preparing the world for alien contact? IT is very interesting to learn that NASA decided to team up with the Library of Congress and gather scientists, historians, philosophers and theologians from all around the world to discuss how to prepare mankind for contact with beings not from Earth. The idea that life exists elsewhere in the universe could be both exciting and dangerous for society. Imagine waking up one day turning on the news and hearing that NASA has just found irrefutable proof of aliens on another planet and that they have already made contact, what would that mean for you, your family, your community, city country and the entire planet? How much would things change? Let's not forget the latest news about potential alien life from NASA, as you are reading through this article. Criteria, similar to the same size as Earth, rotates around the sun like, like our star, our sun, and located in a habitable zone. Let's talk about the habitable zone. It's the Goldilocks zone, as you call it. You know the old story. This is just right. You get too close to the star and it gets too hot, too far away, and it's too cold for life. One in five stars has an Earth-sized planet in a habitable zone, all right? Now Astronomers from SETI are looking for confirmation about alien life near the star where NASA spotted giant, alien-like, megastructures. Tabitha Boyajian, a postdoc at Yale, told The Atlantic, We'd never seen anything like this star, it was really weird, we thought it might be bad data or movement on the spacecraft. 
But everything checked out, according to Jason Wright, an astronomer at the Pennsylvania State University. These structures, or better said megastructures, could be the product of a highly advanced alien civilization. We're looking at all scenarios about finding life, if you find microbes, that's one thing, if you find intelligence, it's another, and if they communicate, it's something else. And depending on what they say, it's something else. The idea is not to wait until we make a discovery, but to try and prepare the public for what the implications might be when such a discovery is made. I think the reason that NASA is backing this is because of all the recent activity in the discovery of exoplanets and the advances in astrobiology in general. People just consider it much more likely now that we're going to find something, probably microbes first and maybe intelligence later. The driving force behind this is from a scientific point of view that it seems much more likely now that we're going to find life at some point in the future, astronomer, symposium organizer and former chief NASA historian, Stephen J. Dick, source, we found it particularly interesting the commentary of brother Guy Consolomgo. president of the Vatican Observatory Foundation who stated, I believe, alien life exists, but I have no evidence. I would be really excited and it would make my understanding of my religion deeper and richer in ways that I can't even predict yet, which is why it would be so exciting. Finding life elsewhere in the cosmos isn't a question of possibility but rather a question of time and brother Guy Consolmania shares this view as he urges the public not to be surprised when scientists confirm the existence of alien life elsewhere in the cosmos as this is something that is going to happen inevitably. But is religion, faith and alien life something compatible? According to Brother Consolmania, he wouldn't mind baptizing alien beings in the future. In the last couple of years the Vatican has changed their views about alien life drastically. Just imagine if someone would have said something like, aliens 100 years ago. Things have changed and religion has become much more flexible, we know that the universe is huge, Earth isn't at its center and our planet isn't flat. The next big discovery, alien life. But it seems that a lot of people from around the world, astronauts and government officials already know that life exists elsewhere in the universe and it isn't a surprise. For example, yes there have been crashed craft and bodies recovered, we are not alone in the universe, they have been coming here for a long time. Source, Apollo 14 astronaut, Air Force captain, and founder of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, Dr. Edgar Mitchell. Dr. Edgar Mitchell isn't the only one to talk about alien life, as there are a lot of other people who share Mitchell's point of view. In my opinion I think they were worried that it would panic the public so they started telling lies about it, and then I think they had to tell another lie to cover their first lie. Now they don't know how to get out of it, now it's going to be so embarrassing to admit that all these administrations have told so many untruths, it would be embarrassing getting out of it. There are a number of extraterrestrial vehicles out there cruising around. Source, Gordon Cooper, former NASA astronaut, aeronautical engineer and test pilot. Cooper and Mitchell aren't the only NASA astronauts to talk about extraterrestrial life as Dr. Brian O'Leary also opened up about alien life in the universe stating the following. There is abundant evidence that we're being contacted, that civilizations have been visiting us for a very long time, that their appearance is bizarre from any type of traditional materialistic Western point of view, that these visitors use the technologies of consciousness, they use toroids, they use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems, that seems to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon, Dr. Brian O'Leary. 
former NASA astronaut and Princeton physics professor, source. And as I've said before that governmental officials have talked about alien life to the public, Paul Hellyer, former Canadian defense minister had a lot to say about E.T. decades ago. Visitors from other planets warned us about the direction we were heading and offered to help. Instead, some of us interpreted their visits as a threat and decided to shoot first and ask questions after. It is ironic that the US should be fighting monstrously expensive wars, allegedly to bring democracy to those countries, when it itself can no longer claim to be called a democracy when trillions and I mean thousands of billions of dollars have been spent on black projects which both Congress and the Commander-in-Chief have been kept deliberately in the dark. Paul Hellier, former Canadian Defence Minister, source, but if you think that Hellier was the only one to talk about aliens, you are wrong. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? Roscoe Helenko Etta, the former head of the Central Intelligence Agency, said the following, Behind the scenes, high-ranking Air Force officers are soberly concerned about UFOs, but through official secrecy and ridicule. Many citizens are led to believe the unknown flying objects are nonsense. Former head of CIA, Roscoe Helen Coetta, 1960. We could continue and state many more statements from highly ranked officials, but that list would be extremely extensive, as you can see. The world as we know it is being prepared step by step for the truth. Our society has changed drastically in the last 10 to 20 years and we have come to the point where alien life and UFOs have become something ordinary in all corners of the world and it is only a matter of time when NASA and other agencies will release information about alien life. If UFOs and extraterrestrials do not exist, why is there so much interest from the FBI, CIA and other agencies in the subject? If you extrapolate on the planets they discovered, there are a trillion planets in the galaxy, that's a lot of places for life, Shostak said, as quoted by ABC. We know that the majority of stars have planets, but what fraction of stars has planets that are more like the Earth? It might be one in five, the chances of finding it I think are good and if that happens it will happen in the next 20 years depending on the financing, he added in written testimony. According to BuzzFeed, source, let's say that UFOs and aliens are just a modern day forgery and that the hundreds of thousands of images around the world are nothing more than elaborated hoaxes. The question that we need to ask is why is there then so much interest from governmental agencies regarding the subject? Why create Project Blue Book if there is no such things as aliens and UFOs? Why bother investigating in the first place? The project began in 1947 after a series of UFO sightings that shocked media and people across America. One of those cases that caught the attention of the government was when pilot Kenneth Arnold observed nine unidentified flying objects moving at high speeds through the skies over Washington's Mount Rainier. A scenario that has not been explained and people today still wonder what happened. Project Blue Book investigated 12,618 UFO sightings over a period of two decades. Huge amounts of data were collected, researched and analyzed, and even though we can get access to the data, some ufologists believe that the truth has been hidden even though secret documentation has been declassified. As a result, from 1947 to 1969, a total of 12 
618 sightings were reported to Project Blue Book, where 90% of those sightings were attributed to explainable phenomena, caused by known astronomical phenomena, atmospheric or artificial, man-made, phenomenon. But out of the 12,618 sightings, 701 remain unidentified, meaning that there was insufficient information to assign or attribute the event to a known cause. In 2011, after some documents were declassified, a report written by a special agent of the FBI in 1947 reached the public, the special agent of the FBI, a lieutenant colonel whose identity remained anonymous because of national security, gather numerous data on the UFO phenomena after interviewing and studying the phenomena for years, again. If there are no such things as aliens and the flying sources millions of people have seen around the world are nothing more but elaborate hoaxes, why bother investigating? Spending money on a subject that is proven to be a hoax, surely there has to be something more to it. Before being killed, John F. Kennedy demanded from the CIA and NASA Intel on UFOs declassified documents have generated suspicions about the motives that led to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. As new documents have emerged, some researchers suggest that President Kennedy was killed because he was too close to aliens, just 10 days before being killed. Former President of the United States John F. Kennedy asked the CIA for classified documents about UFOs, according to the Freedom of Information Act. We are talking about two letters written by the former President of the United States. One of the letters was sent to the director of the CIA while the other one was sent to NASA, in the letters. Former President John F. Kennedy asked for the establishment of a space cooperation with the Soviet Union. These letters surfaced thanks to the work of writer William Lester, as he was gathering information for a book about the life of John F. Kennedy. One of his concerns was that a lot of these UFOs were being seen over the Soviet Union and he was very concerned that the Soviets might misinterpret these UFOs as U.S. aggression. Believing that it was some of our technology, Mr. Lester told AL News. I think this is one of the reasons why he wanted to get his hands on this information and get it away from the jurisdiction of NASA so he could say to the Soviets, look, that's not us. We're not doing it, we're not being provocative. If governments were so sure that alien beings and the UFO phenomenon are nothing more but elaborated hoaxes, why spend so much money and effort to investigate the two? It is interesting to know that government agencies such as the FBI and CIA have had great interests in the UFO phenomena. You would think that if there is a threat to national security posed by a UFO per second, the president would be among the first, if not the first to become aware of it. Many people have speculated that governments around the world have had contact with beings not from Earth for a long time, every once in a while. A new declassified document pops up on the internet and all the dots that seemed pointless from several classified documents seem to connect in the end. The more documents are declassified, the more questions are being raised.